Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sector Espinoza, and today I'll be sharing some very useful information with you um, in hopes of finding an alternative uh, to prison in the U.S. correctional system. It seems like nowadays people are being sent to prison for even the slightest uh, of crime, even the smallest of crime. The universal solution to all crimes in the U.S. seems to be uh, jail. I say otherwise. There are many countries in the world with much higher populations than that of ours, yet the inmate per capita is the highest in the, in the U.S. compared to the rest of the world. Uh, using China as an example, the population is 1.3 billion and they have 119 inmates per every 100,000 people in China versus that of the U.S. with a population of 311.6 million they have, we have 715 inmates per every 100,000 people. That is almost six times higher than that of China, and yet we only have a quarter of their population. In order to minimize the cost, correctional facilities should be left to the extreme killer, the extreme criminals such as killers, rapists, and pedophiles instead of sending everybody to jail that commits a crime. The first point that I'd like to cover is the high cost to run a prison at our expense, the taxpayer. The cost per inmate per year is very high. The price per inmate uh, per year will vary depending, depending on the prison. For this speech, I'm going to use California uh, as an example. According to the Legislative An Analyst Office, the average cost per year to incarcerate an inmate in the state of California in 2008 was about 47000 which is more than most people even make. The cost per year as a country is $37 billion plus. So, the cost per inmate also depends on the age and their needs. For example, somebody with heart problems is going to require more money. They need special treatment, they need to see special doctors, which is, which is not free. Uh, they also need special medication to keep up with their disabilities. Uh, plain and simple, incarcerating all criminals does not fix the problem. Overcrowding of prisons creates more problems. If you put someone in a very sm small living quarters, confrontation is inevitable, inevitable. Violence erupts and violence will increase as a whole. Rape and murder increases as overcrowded prisons get more inmates. Mixing of criminals, of all criminals, makes even bigger criminals. Um, what I mean by that is, for example, a person going for something like marijuana is, uh, is now going to be in jail with uh, killers. The same person, same person that was only a minor criminal selling pot out of his house uh, may not have to kill somebody in jail uh, to remain alive and now will be doing more time for, for murder. Now what sense does it make to mix killers with any other criminal? Uh, for example, people that go in for drinking and driving, people do make mistakes. Uh, another big thing is transmission of STDs. Uh, rape being a very common thing in prison, STDs is, the transmission is at a very high risk. Those that may be in for minor things can acquire STDs while in prison and will only release it to everyone else whenever they leave prison. A uh, third point I'd like to cover is um, methods to minimize inmates and methods to decrease costs of maintaining the system. There are many out there already out there and some that I like to share myself. For example, uh, drug treatment. Rather than throwing someone in jail for substance abuse or possession, rehabilitation classes should be used at the person's expense. The person can, put, can be put to do small jobs and be paid less than minimum wage uh, to pay for the classes. Uh, another option would be charge them to stay, make them pay to stay in jail. Make the inmate work, work to pay the state 
to stay at the prison. Uh, make inmates produce a certain product uh, for profit and pay them even a quarter of uh, a minimum wage just to at least compensate for the cost of maintaining the, the prison. Um, another option would be to possibly learn a trade while in jail that can be applied when they are released. Uh, another way that you could minimize is corporate criminals could be used um, as teachers in low-income schools. Most corporate criminals are well-educated and their skills can be, put to, can be put to good use in low-income schools. Guidelines should be, used to, could, should be used to use the protection of all, such as, and of course, most importantly, uh, to fully, disclo fully disclose and position to the parents the program that is being presented. By cutting down the costs, and also by cutting costs, you can also put money to fix other, other departments in the school and also save the taxpayers money. Depending on the situation, you can either allow them or not allow them to teach. Uh, for most of them are not really dangerous, they are just mainly greedy or dishonest. Being mo they should always be monitored. Uh, just to ensure that nothing else happens so that they don't leave and that they to make sure that they finish out their their time rather than sending a person to jail have them you can also you can also have them lock up the ignition so that it only allows you to do it based on a breathalyzer uh, reading so for people that went in for uh, drinking and driving you could do that my last and final point that I want to cover is public humiliation. How better than to deter people from committing crimes than by public humiliation? Sometimes we have to resort back to primitive ways to cheat somebody less and, and keep them from going to jail. For example, uh, there's nothing more humiliating than somebody holding up a sign, reading out, I'm a criminal, I shoplifted at so and so a shop, uh, in front of everybody. Now, before we get into your wrong idea, I just want to let everybody know that in no way do I support crime, or in no way do I believe that one crime is better than the other, for a crime is a crime. I do, however, believe that depending on the crime, an alternative method should be used to minimize the inmate population. I believe that the space available in the prison system or any correctional system should be used for more for the more dangerous uh, criminals out there uh, rather than sending them to jail. Many times people can change and be brought back into society without imprisonment. I'd rather see my taxpayer paying money go to somewhere else. Are there any questions for me? Can you tell me a little more what about what a corporate criminal is and give an example? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, corporate criminals, anybody um, unlike, let's say, for example, if you kill somebody, uh, you know, a corporate criminal is more like in the business of, for example, um, going in for fraud, um, say somebody made some numbers up on a company, uh, falsifying records, stuff like that, uh, people cheating, let's say, for example, if you're a realtor and you cheat somebody out of their money, uh, lie about a uh, loan or anything like that, so that's what, uh, that's what that would be. Any other questions? Yes, I have one. Uh, do you really think that public humiliation is okay and actually works? Yeah, but I've actually, I used, I used the whole holding the sign uh, example because I've actually seen it in place. Um, about a month ago, I actually got to witness uh, this young 17-year-old that was shot, got caught shoplifting at Walmart. Uh, rather than Walmart sending him to jail and banning him, they actually had him hold a sign for the whole day and kept him from going to jail. Are there any other questions? Nope. Thank you guys for giving me your attention. Thank you.